Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint & Sip, and this is Paint and & Sip at Home. So today we're going to be painting dog and cat watching a sunset and I'm going to be drinking a little sangria. So let's get painted and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, we're going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas. You can certainly get this at any of your craft stores or switch up the size, but that's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to use three brushes. I'm going to use a half inch wide bristle brush a number 10 round brush and a number two round brush. And I might refer, these, refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go. Um, and you can switch up the sizes, but that's what I'm using. You'll also wanna have a pencil. I'm just gonna use a generic number two pencil, but you could switch that up. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. And the colors that I'm using are titanium white, chrome yellow, burnt sienna, which I will probably call rust. This is burnt umber, which I'll probably call brown. This is Mars black and green oxide. And again, you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. You are gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I will also be downloading or putting down in the description a downloadable image of the final painting. So you can print that and use that as you go along for as a visual reference, as well as there's going to be step-by-step um, -step instructions that you can use. And that's all you're going to need for today. All right, so for the first step, what we're going to do is we're going to use our pencil and we're going to draw an outline to separate our sky from our land. So I'm gonna come up on the left-hand side about a quarter of the way, and to figure out how far that is, you, do, you could use a ruler, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. If this is halfway, I can just eyeball about halfway between there, which is gonna be my quarter mark. And then on, this, on the right side, I'm gonna go about a third of the way. So if this is my halfway point, I'm just gonna go a little bit below that, and you could always you know, kind of go one, two, three, well, that's a little bit high, so maybe drop it just a little bit. You just want it a little bit higher than this side over here. And then I'm gonna connect them, my dots, with a hill. And that's all I'm gonna do for the first step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step, I'm using my bristle brush. I'm gonna be painting my sky and I'm gonna be using three colors. I'm using rust, yellow, and white and I'm gonna be doing a gradient. So it's gonna be darker at the top and lighter at the bottom, and I'm gonna try and get a very light spot for my sun right at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with rust and yellow on my brush at the same time. I'm just using a left to right brush stroke. And as I come down that canvas, I'm gonna be transitioning into yellow, and white. So now I have rust yellow and white on my brush. And as I go down the sky, I'm gonna stop using rust, probably, or picking up rust right about now. And then I'm gonna transition, I'm just picking up yellow and white on my brush. And what's gonna happen, I did not wash my brush, and I'm kind of using a little bit of an arcing motion. Um, you could go straight across, um, totally left to right, but I think I'm gonna use a little bit of an arcing motion. And as you come down, again, I'm using yellow and white still, and my rust, you can see, is kind of working its way off of my brush. And then as I come down towards the further on down that sky, and you can see there's little remnants of that rust still showing through, which I like because it adds a more natural look to it. I like to kind of go back up and down. That helps to um, make my gradient smoother looking. Um, so here I go, I just picked up more white with a touch of the yellow. And right about now, I'm gonna stop picking up yellow. So I'm just gonna be picking up white. And what's gonna happen is my sky is gonna get even lighter as it comes down towards that horizon area. 
So right now I'm not picking up any more yellow. I'm just picking up white. And I am going to at some point kind of designate myself I'll do that right now, my whitest spot, which is gonna be kind of right about here. This is gonna be where that sun is just kind of sinking right down below the, um, the horizon or that hill. And now I'm gonna put just a touch of yellow on my brush. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna kind of accent the exterior um, area of that sun and it's going to make the sun kind of pop out just a little bit more and I'm not doing a firm line I'm just kind of lightly almost dusting it into that white paint um, that I had uh, below and that way it really helps to almost illuminate the sun I'm, I'm, I'm going to add just a touch more yellow not a lot that yellow can really get away from you and go almost too bright but I definitely want, it, want to use it along the edge of that sun so the sun does kind of pop out a little bit more. And then I'm just lightly kind of brushing the rest of that yellow into whatever the surrounding wet paint is. And if you want, you can add a touch more white down at that horizon and that'll help to um, show the glow of the sun as it's kind of dipping down below that hill. And that's gonna be all I'm gonna do for that step. Um, I am gonna use this same brush for the next step. So you'll wanna wash it and dry it in preparation for the next step. All right, so on to the next step. We're gonna be painting the grass for our hill. I'm gonna be using brown, green, yellow, and white. And I'm using my bristle brush and I'm gonna have my hill darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. So I'm gonna start with brown and green on my brush and I'm gonna be applying this with a dotting technique. So you can kind of skip around if you want. I like to use this dotting technique with this bristle brush um, because it allows for a nice textured look um, and a more natural grassy look without having to do individual grass strands or without having to get any kind of fancy brush to to do this um, so again right now i'm just using green and brown and i'm just kind of dotting it in there and what i don't want to happen is for it to look like i have um rows of colors so what I'm going to do is I'm getting this whole bottom area done with the brown and green and every time I pick up my paint sometimes I pick up more green sometimes I pick up more brown it doesn't really matter you want to be able to have kind of a, a area that you know maybe some are darker brown some are a little bit greener um, and again, that's going to add for a more natural look to it. Right now, I'm just picking up green and working my way up the hill. Um, but what I do so it doesn't look like I have rows of colors is I'm going to be crossing over where I just am using green. I'm going to dot into that darker area below. And that's going to allow these colors to kind of transition really nicely together. And I'm just kind of using green as, as I go up that hill. When I get to the tippy top, what I'll do is I'm going to start introducing the yellow and the white on it. So that way it looks like the sun is going to be illuminating or highlighting the top of the hill. Um, and because I didn't wash my brush, I still have some remnants of the brown that is continually kind of working its way off my brush. Uh, right now I'm going to pick up green, yellow, and white at the same time on my brush. And this is going to start to add that really pretty highlight right at the top of that hill. And I do want it to work its way into this green area as well. So I just picked up a little bit more green and I'm just kind of lightly dotting them into each other. So that way, again, it doesn't look like I have rows of colors, but it, it looks like it's just kind of transitioning from the dark area on the far side of the hill to the very light and bright area at the top of the hill. Um, and you don't want to over dot it. If you, if you sit and dot it a thousand times in the same spot, what's going to happen is it's going to um, almost turn into a solid color if you're using this particular technique and you want to have the, um, the textured kind of more 
um, diversity in the colors, you really just want to kind of dot it lightly and not a lot. Um, so that way you can maintain the, the different colors. So I have little spots of white, I have little spots of yellow. Right now I'm just kind of using the, the corner of my brush and you want to make sure that you have enough paint on your brush too. And then I'm just going to kind of lightly dot it down into the, the green area just to make sure it doesn't look like it's just one line of brightness at the top. And it can be uneven because this is meant to emulate grass. Um, it does not have to be a really smooth line at the top. And then when you get done this step, we are going to switch brushes to that medium round brush that you have. I think it's the number 10. Um, I'm just kind of making my little edges a little more uneven here so it looks a little bit more natural. And then I'm gonna put this brush away in my water cup, get my medium brush out and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put our tree trunk and branches in place. I'm gonna be using my number 10 round brush and I'm going to, this is just my first layer of this. So I'm gonna be using just brown and black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go a little bit to the right of the center and I'm gonna go maybe about an inch or two down below my horizon line. Um, that's where I'm gonna start my tree. I'm gonna have my tree trunk come up about maybe to the halfway point of my canvas, somewhere about here, and that's when I'll start branching it off. I do want my tree trunk to be wider at the bottom and more narrow at the top, so that makes it look a little bit more natural. So here I go, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna decide where I want this to go, and I'm just gonna kind of, kind of wiggle the side of it so it doesn't look too uniform. I like my trees to have some, some curves to them and to be um, not like telephone poles, but you can certainly decide what kind of tree you would like. And then I'm just gonna kind of make this bottom so it's not really straight, straight. We are gonna put some grass at the bottom later, but that's how I'm gonna start it for now. And then I'm just gonna decide where I want some of my branches to go. So you could have a lot of branches coming out. Maybe you have just a few. Maybe you've got some that are gonna cross over one another. Um, I do want to have kind of like a nice big one coming out here. The trick to making these tree um, branches look a little bit more natural is you want them to cross over one another. You also want to um, have them get skinnier at the ends of them. So what I do is I'm not pressing hard. I have a good amount of paint on my brush when I go to do um, the littler ones and you can kind of trail it off, like you release your pressure so it doesn't get um, really thick. But we are gonna be putting leaves on this tree as well. So if you don't get these branches perfect, don't worry about it because you're going to be hiding the majority of them with a whole bunch of leaves. So I think I'm gonna make this a little bit wider. I think I want my tree to be more of like a wise oak tree nice and big at the base and have nice full leaves up at the top. Um, but again, you can have yours whatever way you want. You might want yours to be a nice, you know, shape of like an apple tree or um, a birch tree. I don't know. There's lots of different kinds of trees. Maybe you want a big pine tree going on your canvas, but this is the kind I'm going to do. Um, and when you get done with this step, we are going to switch to our small brush. Um, I just am continuing to make my little leaves or my branches here. Uh, so when you get done with your tree trunk and branches, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so here goes the fun part of making our dog and cat. So you could make four cats, one dog, maybe a squirrel. I'm not gonna teach you how to paint a squirrel, but if you, if you want to, you can do a squirrel. Um, I am going to show you how to mix some basic colors because uh, we all have different colored cats and dogs. Some of you might have black cats. 
white dogs, orange cats, calico cats. Um, so I'm just going to give you a basic um, little step on how to mix different colors with what you have on your palette. Um, I'm going to be, for my cat and dog, I'm going to be using white, yellow, rust, and brown. So I can have two different brown shades. I'm going to go for a light brown shade and like a rusty brown. Um, if you're doing a black animal, you can certainly just paint it black first and then use like a gray as your highlights. If you're doing a white animal, I recommend you go with a gray base and then do fur or highlights with white. So here we go. I'm going to make a light tan for my cat. So I'm going to be using white. Oh, I'm using my small brush for the record, my number two round. A touch of yellow, a touch of rust, and a touch of brown and I'm gonna just mix that together. And to me, that's a little bit too yellow for me, so I'm gonna add a little bit more white and maybe a touch of the rust to turn it into more of like a, um, a creamy brown as opposed to a light yellow, because I don't really want a light yellow here. So I am gonna add some more white and maybe a touch more of the rust. And again, the color is going to be based on whatever color you want. So you might have, um, you know, a dark brown cat. You know, you might have, you know, whatever color your animal is or whatever color you want it to be. And then for my dog, I'm going to be using the same color combination, only this time I'm going to be making it darker. So I'm using rust. I'm using a little scoop of my brown. I'm gonna use a touch of yellow and then just a touch of my white because I want my dog to be darker. So this is the color combination I'm gonna do for this, for my dog. So it's a nice, almost like chocolatey color, maybe like a milk chocolate kind of color. Just added a little bit more brown to it. And those are gonna be my two base colors for my animals. So I'm gonna do my shape of my cat first. I just wa I'm washing and drying my small brush. I'm gonna use my cream color that I've created for my cat. And for my cat, I'm gonna do a circle for the head. Um, and however big your head is, is gonna dictate how large your body becomes. So I want my cat to be shorter than my dog. My dog is gonna be about this tall, so I'm gonna make my cat a little bit shorter. I'm gonna do a circle for my head and you can make it again as big or as small as you want and for my body I'm going to do kind of like this sideways teardrop kind of thing and I'm just coloring it in and if you have a big cat a nice healthy cat you can certainly make this a little bit you know fuller just ran through a little bit of wet yell, but that's okay. I need a couple of cat ears, so I'm gonna make one cat ear like that. I'm gonna make another cat ear like that. And they just kind of stick up on the edges of the head. And then I want myself a tail, so I'm gonna just kind of come along that side with the tail. And this is gonna be, um, when, once you get the color on there, I'm going to let it dry for a minute while I go and do my other animal, and then we'll come back and add little highlights to it. So that's going to be the shape of my cat. I'm going to wash and dry my small brush, and I'm going to do my shape of my dog. And for me, my dog, this is just kind of a generic so shape of a dog. I kind of um, liken it to almost like a snowman for the shape of it. So... Think of it as you've got the, the torso or the main part of the, the dog that's going to be kind of almost like a long or an oval type shape. I'm going to bring it a little bit further down here. So this is going to be the torso and this would be, this would be a good shape for like a Labrador maybe. Then you have the rear end part which is going to be kind of another circle type shape. Then you have the, the, um, the feet part that might be sticking out the sides. So I just add a little bump there. 
and a little bump there. Then I need my head for my dog. And again, this can be as big or as small as you want. So I'm gonna do kind of another circle type shape on the top of this, and this is a pretty tall dog. Then I need some ears. So I'm gonna make mine with floppy ears. If you have like a shepherd, you could of course make them standing up kind of like the cat ears. So I've got one ear there, and I've got another ear there. And then you might want to have a tail somewhere, so I'm gonna put a tail just kind of coming back where the tail should go. <laughs> I'm not gonna put it on his shoulder or anything. Um, and then if you feel like you need to widen anything, I feel like this part might wanna go a little bit wider. And then I need to go and add maybe collars. If you have collars, you can put collars on your, your cat or your dog. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of black for some collars. I got one collar there. I've got another collar here. I'm gonna use black and brown to put, um, if you wanna put any shadow underneath them. So I just have a little black and brown on my brush. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadow underneath them. So this way it looks like they're in the grass and with the sun in front of them. So just a little shadow under them. A little shadow under the tail. And you could, you know, make this more bold if you want to. And then if you want to, you can add a little bit of highlight to it. So you could touch your brush in white paint for the cat, because this is a light color. I could add a little bit of highlight over on that side, maybe a little bit on the tail. If you did too much, you can go into your original color. This is just to add a little bit of dimension to it or you could make it a little bit darker in the back. It's totally up to you. If I wanted to add a little bit more dimension, I could add a touch of the, my browner color back here. So you could really play with these colors as much as you want. The, um, the dog, I could add a little bit of lighter tones up at the top, or I could even add some fur if you, you know, wanted, if you had a long-haired, um, dog or something, you could certainly add some fur. So you can really play with these colors as much as you want, but I'm really not gonna go too in detail with them. I'm just kind of looking for them to be more of like silhouettes as opposed to, um, you know, full on photographs of the dogs. And that's kind of all I'm gonna do for my pets. Again, you could really fiddle with them and have fun and, you know, make more modifications, make blue collars or purple collars, but that's all I'm gonna do. Um, and for the next step, I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. So you can put this away in your water cup and take out your large brush for the next step. All right, uh, so for the next step, we're using our large brush. We're gonna make the shadow on the ground of the tree. So with any shadow, you want to draw a line from the center, not draw, imagine a line from the center of your sun to the object that needs to be shaded or, shat, or that's casting a shadow. And so for me, the center of my sun is right here and my object is here. So my shadow is gotta come off in that angle from, from the sun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using my large brush, brown, black, and green, and just a little bit of all three colors on my brush. This is definitely a less is more kind of step. And I want my shadow to be as wide as the base of my tree in through here. And then as I'm coming off in this angle, you could dot it, or you could kind of use this left to right brush stroke motion. Um, what this is meant to look like is the grass only darker. So the dotting method might be the safest method, so you still have some of those little green peek throughs coming, you know, coming through the shadowed part. Um, you might want to rub it, whatever works for you. And for me, I want this to kind of be a long shadow because my sun is very low. So in my opinion, I wouldn't see this part of the tree in my shadow 
um, yet. So it would be my that part would be over here. So I'm really just kind of doing a, a, a line that's trailing off. Um, and that's all I'm going to do for the shadow. So when you get this done, we are going to use the same brush for the next step and you don't have to wash it. Just maybe take a sip and get ready. All right, so what we're doing for this step is we are doing the leaves on the tree. I'm going to be using green, brown, black, yellow, and white. So I'm going to start with black and green on my brush and I'm going to be dotting. So this is meant again to look more kind of like a silhouette. So I'm going to be having a lot of dark color on my leaves until it gets down towards where the sun is. So this is all dark up in through here. So that's why I'm using green and black. And you can start you know, using a little bit down in through here. We're gonna highlight it in a minute with your lighter colors. Um, I do wanna see some of the, the sun set poking through. Um, I'm picking up right now green, brown, and black to add a little bit more color to it. That brown helps out. Um, and I'm just dotting. I'm dotting kind of in little clusters. Um, you don't have to dot just at the end of every branch. You do want to kind of um, dot throughout the tree. Uh, and I like to have an uneven tree top so that way it doesn't look like, you know, the landscaper came through and just clipped all the edges. So I definitely am going to have a fuller kind of tree. And I'm just kind of rotating that when I go to pick up paint, I'm picking up sometimes just green, sometimes brown and green, sometimes a little bit of black. Um, the black can easily overpower, so if you feel like all of your leaves are turning black, then please just wash and dry your brush and kind of start with a, a fresh um, brush. That way you can, um, you can see some of this green too. And I'm bringing my leaves all the way to the top of my canvas. You can, ex you can see I'm extending them farther than my branches were. Um, and then when I get down towards this area, down towards the bottom, that's when I'm going to start utilizing my yellow, green, and white as if these leaves down at the bottom are being illuminated by that sun going down. So this is going to give a really pretty effect to it, having the brightness down at the bottom of these leaves. And you know, you could certainly sprinkle it in, uh, you know, sprinkle in a little bit of bright yellow here and there just to add some effect throughout the tree, like maybe some of those leaves on the other side of the tree are being illuminated as well. Um, but this is a, a visual preference. I suppose you could use some of that rust color as well. Um, but right now I'm just really adding more of this yellow color in through here so it really has a nice pretty effect down at the bottom and popping out a couple of these branches. I am gonna put just a little bit in through here so that way it does look like, you know, maybe that sun is helping to cast some brightness on the other side as well. And that's all I'm gonna do for my leaves. My next um, step is going to be with my medium brush. So when you're all done with your leaves on the tree, you can put the big brush away in a water cup and take out the medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is I am adding the highlight or the bark to the tree um, and, the, and any branches you think you might want to do this to. But the reason why I waited till now is because I like my base coat to dry before I put these additional colors on it. It gives me a little bit more control. So the colors that I'm gonna use are rust, yellow, and white. And if I run into any trouble, I can certainly add back some black or brown. So I'm gonna start with rust and I'm using my number 10 medium round brush. I really want my highlight, the brightest part, to be focused over here on the left hand side. So I'm gonna simply outline a little bit past my tree so you can really see that reddish kind of color poking through. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of that to 
couple, you know, any little spots peeking through my tree and through here. Um, this adds a, a, a nice effect to it um, without doing much work. So think of it as whatever side of the tree or branch is facing that sun, you can add this almost like a, a reddish or a rusty kind of outline to. And you can go far into your tree if you want to, or you can just kind of stay in this bottom left-hand corner of the tree. Um, the farther away you go, the less you'd kind of see it because it would be hidden by leaves and stuff like that. Um, but now that I've got that outline on that left-hand side, now I picked up a little bit more rust and I'm gonna to touch my brush in yellow as well and just a tiny touch of white and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of highlight that side of the tree. And what this is doing is it's eliminating the firm black outline that you might be detecting on, um, on the edge of your tree right now. And you can certainly you know, modify that exterior outline. Um, and I'm just going slow and I'm not having a lot of paint on my brush. So this way, again, I can really, I'm in control, not, not the paint. And I'm just using the teeny tiny tip of my brush. And if you want, you can pull some of that into the, the tree a little bit. Um, I wouldn't go too, too far, but you can certainly pull it in a little bit. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna tell the viewer that this is, you know, the tree has some, some roundness to it. Um, and if you don't like that the right hand side is totally black, then you can certainly add a little bit of brown um, and lighten it up just a little bit, but it will be more dramatic the brighter the left hand side is. So if you can leave that right hand side nice and dark, that's gonna help to, um, to aid in the, in the, you know, kind of, illusion that that left side is being highlighted by the sun. And again, you can make this as bright as you want. I just added a little bit more white to my brush because I like to have the effect um, that it's being highlighted by that sun. So I'm just kind of poking it in here a little bit. And then we're going to use this brush for the next step. So once you've got as much of a sun-kissed look on your tree as you want. You can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm going to add some longer grass at the bottom of my tree. I'm gonna be using green, rust, yellow, and white. And the reason why I'm doing this is I don't want it to look um, too stark back here. And usually there, you know, you'll find little pieces of grass growing at the bottom of a tree. You could certainly um, add flowers too if you wanted to, but this is the dark side of the tree. So I'm not gonna go too, too crazy with it. Right now I just have green on my brush and I'm really just kind of adding these little sprouts of grass. Um, so I said green, brown, you can add it past the tree too if you want to. Maybe a little bit of yellow and white. Now, the, the tough part here is you're using the same exact colors that you used on the original grass. So in order for you to be able to see it, you definitely need some contrast. So that's where I'm gonna use a little bit of white. I just added white to my brush. So maybe as the grass pokes around this side of the tree, you add a little bit of white to it. And you can have tall pieces, you can have short pieces, you can have them throughout the shadow area if you want to. Um, it's really a visual preference on your part, but you know this helps to um, make it not look so stark at the bottom of the tree. And again, if you've done too much, you can certainly go back into the black I'm adding a couple pieces of black grass, so these look like they're in the shadow. And then we have one final step to this painting, and it's gonna be done with your small brush. 
So once you get this little cute grass around the bottom of your tree, you can put the medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. Alrighty, so what we're doing for the last step is we're gonna sign it. I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint. You can sign it in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. Well, that's where I sign mine. Um, I'm gonna do my initials. You could do your first name. You could do the date. You could do anything you'd like to. This is your identifying mark. You could even put it in the, in the trunk of your tree if you wanted to. I've had lots of people put a little cute heart, carved heart or whatever, but that's all I'm gonna do on this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.